What's up everybody and welcome back to another video on ACT Math from the Scalar Learning Channel. Today we're going to talk about some amazing breakdowns of the ACT Math section to give you the ultimate strategy to use this week when you're taking the ACT in terms of what you need to study and what you really need to focus on in the next couple of days depending on your target score, depending on where you're at. And these statistics are brought to you by Math Chops, okay? Math Chops is an amazing app. By the way, this is not a paid sponsorship video, whatever. Uh, I actually know the gentleman who created Math Chops, Mike McGibbon. He's a legend, and he's going to be on this video too, kind of explaining some of his protocols and methods and so on and so forth. So this is going to be the most common ACT math problems problem types uh, by difficulty based on the last 10 exams. I'm going to show you the breakdown that he created and we're going to see how we can use this to our advantage. So first I'm going to jump in with a video from Mike, the creator, founder of Math Chops, the one who did this research, found these stats. I'm going to let him explain how he did it and why and then I'll jump back in and we're gonna show you how you can use this information. Hey, what's up? My name is Mike McGibbon. I'm the co-founder of Math Chops. It's an adaptive math practice tool that helps you target exactly what you need to work on for your uh, particular point in the ACT journey. Um, and so as part of that, I need to analyze all the questions from actual tests. So what I do is I go through every single question, I apply a ton of different tags to it. So like a tag might have like, quadratics, uh, foil, you know, uh, factor by grouping, whatever may come up on that particular question. And then afterwards, I run it all through a Python script and I analyze like the frequency of each tag. So I can see like, okay, like factor by grouping doesn't actually come up a lot, but maybe law of cosines comes up four times. And for me, if something's shown up at least two or three times, it needs to be in the math chops question bay. And then like, you know, I'll have it set up so the numbers change every time and, and students can hit that up as many times as they want. So this particular analysis, like I basically wanted to see, well, how often do things show up in like different quadrants of the test? So like one through 15, that's the easiest part of the test. 46 to 60, those are going to be a lot harder on average. And I wanted to see like you know, what tends to show up in what part of the test. So let's look at the first 15. And the thing to remember about the ACT is that it gets progressively more difficult. Now, does that mean that a random 38, question 38 might be easier than a random 22? Yeah, it can happen. But in general, the deeper you get into the test, the more difficult each problem type becomes. So that's why we're looking at 1 through 15 first. And in particular, we're looking at you know, what? what is 15 correct on the ACT? This is an approximation, right? I looked at several curves that are mapped out and we get, say, 15 correct. This is approximately a 15. So if this is something that you're shooting for, let's say you're shooting for a 15 or 16, somewhere in this zone, you got to make sure that you're nailing 1 through 15 because, again, they're going to be the easiest questions on the test. And if you can knock out all 15 in a row and get those right, and this is your target or somewhere in that zone, you're kind of good to go. 15 correct, boom, and your best shot is getting these first 15 correct. So notice what shows up a ton. We see fractions at the top of the list. Does that mean it's just a pure fractions question? Hey, how do we add fractions? How do we divide? How do we subtract? No, it means that it's a component. So there's also hybrid problems. It could be a word problem. It could be another type of probability problem, but it will have some involvement of fractions, okay? So it's very important, especially in this zone, but as you're gonna see throughout the video, it's important in general to have a good mastery and understanding of fractions. Uh, way to drill this would be, you know, first shoring up your conceptual understanding of fractions, the operations with fractions, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, and then also hitting practice problems manipulating and using fractions as much as possible. So when we look at the rest of these categories, negatives, order of operations, these are a lot, uh, even decibel, decimals, excuse me, absolute value exponents, these are a lot of the core fundamentals, the basics of mathematics, arithmetic, et cetera. Now, we see a little bit of slope, we see a little bit of linear equations, et cetera, that's gonna be mixed in there. But what does this tell you? This, this tells you that if you're in this zone and this is what you're targeting for this weekend, really shore up your core math ability. So that's what I would focus on there. Okay, next we're gonna look at the next batch of 15, which is 16 through 30. And that's the breakdown. Now we're gonna talk about how these relate to actual scores. So again, if you're aiming for around 20 correct, that's going to be somewhere in approximately a 16, right? And again, that's going to vary from year to year, but that's a that's a decent estimation of the curve. And then let's say we're somewhere at that max 30 correct. That's going to be a nice ACT score of 21, again, out of a total of 36. So if this is your target range, right, if we can knock out these first 30 or get somewhere close, 
to knocking out the first 30, you're already at that nice 21. So again, you would want to focus on the fundamentals like we already talked about. And then look at this, right? We're seeing, again, fractions popping up. You're going to continue to see fractions be a really big category. Um, we're, we're now having some mixed in a percent. We got a little bit of trig, but we're seeing a fair amount. I mean, that's a pretty high frequency still for trig. And in this type of trig, we're really talking about a core understanding of Soka Toa, which is sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, right? That basic triangle uh, application of Soka Toa. It could possibly involve law of sines and cosines, but usually from what I've seen, those questions, those trig questions are always going to be later in the test. By the way, if you want a review of all of these concepts, right, we have our ACT critical concept four part series. Um, and I'll put a link in the description below so you can make sure to check that out and you can go to these particular areas. And um, we're talking about average. That's really a mean, median and mode type of thing. That's at the top of the list. So if you're going to be reviewing averages, right? Adding, adding all the numbers up, taking the sum, dividing by the number of items that you're adding up, right? That's in general what, what we're doing. We're taking an average. I would also shore up your knowledge on median and mode as well. All these different measures of centers of data. Okay. And another thing to note here, again, we've got those exponents. We've got these classic things. We've got slope in there. I mean, I would say hundred percent, if you're trying to knock out these first 30, You've got to have a good understanding of slope, slope, inter net, slope intercept form, linear equations, et cetera. Now we're looking at the next batch of 31 to 45, and we're trying to edge up our score, right? If you get 36 correct, now we're in the 24 zone. And if you're aiming for a nice 27, that would be this first 45 correct. If you're in this category, we're assuming that you've got the fundamentals down, that you're knocking out one through 30 already, right? So what are the, some of the things that are going to be popping up in this zone? You can see, again, we have a repeat of some of those basics, but imaginary numbers, right? That's popping up a lot. Imaginary number, if you remember, that's the square root of negative one. Another important thing to remember is that it's referred to as i and treated like a variable with one exception i squared is negative one i cubed is negative i i to the fourth is positive one again these rules can be reviewed in the complex number section of our critical concept videos so you want to make sure to hit those up and then we see again quadratics a big piece of the act quadratics are our nice x squared equations the parabolas so understanding quadratics understanding factoring understanding how to graph a parabola in different formats etc so this is these are the things that i would focus on if you're kind of targeting somewhere in that 24 to 27 score Finally, now we're in the last batch of 15 problems, right? 46 through 60, arguably the toughest questions on the test. So this is for people who are really shooting for high scores, right? 30 and above, 51, right, is going to approximately equate to a 30. It could be 29, could be 31, you know, depending on the year and the curve. And then, of course, we're going for all 60, correct? That'd be that solid 36. And a lot of times on the ACT, you can manage to get a couple wrong and still pull out a 36. But obviously, if you get everything right, that is a guaranteed 36. So as you can see, those fundamentals, which need to be mastered regardless, right, are those exponents, those fractions. Um, we're still having slope showing up. We're still having average showing up. But what are these categories that we're seeing that are a little bit newer that we didn't see in those previous categories, right? I'm seeing triangle area. Okay, so we know that triangle area formula. There's also a trig-based triangle angle formula that you should have down for this as well. And then we see the inclusion of logarithms. We see the inclusion of radicals, ratios. So logarithms in this zone, I'm seeing one, maybe two log questions per ACT, but really it's probably one. Um, and we're talking about radicals. We're talking about operations with radicals, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, et cetera. So you want to be familiar with all those rules. The other thing that's kind of interesting is that if you look at like the frequencies of the most common questions in each quadrant, there's kind of a much longer tail towards the end. So like, you know, in the first 15, the most common one shows up 15 times. But in the last 15, the, the most common one only shows up 10. And that's because there's like so many different things that they're hitting, you know, whether it's like absolute value, system of equations, law of cosine. So if you're like really shooting for that 32, 33 plus, you've got to be prepared to be like in gatherer mode. <laughs> like you need two of these, three of those, two of those, like across every possible uh, problem type. So now that you have this information, you have a few days left, depending on whatever your target score is, whatever you need to focus on, 
take these lists and go out and bang out some practice problems. If you want to use Math Chops for targeted practice, I highly recommend it. I use it myself. Again, this is not a paid sponsorship, not a paid ad. I genuinely like the product. I wouldn't talk about it if I didn't like it. And I think it's excellent. Another great resource is College Panda. I think they, they have an excellent resource that's organized by question type that I think is phenomenal. And then of course, you can drill and kill with actual ACT practice tests from ACT. That's a phenomenal resource. It just won't be targeted. It won't be laid out category by category. And finally, I'm going to re-mention again that same ACT critical concept video series because you can pinpoint uh, specific categories in the videos and figure out, hey, I, I need a critical concept refresh on this, that, the other, and make sure you got it down. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please click that like button. If you want to see more from the Scalar Learning channel, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you so much for joining. I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.